and welcome to Wild Flash. This is my weekly news series where I go through anything that's come up from the past seven days related to Warcraft at all. So this week, a um, couple of things. First of all, I did a video a couple of days ago where I was uh, showing some disdain for what was the new weekly quest this week, the new content we're supposed to get, new quests each week leading up to the Breach of the Tomb. And then people said, oh, what about the Anduin quest line? That's another quest, isn't it? So it's not just the Nether Shards one. Hmm, yeah. Apart from the fact that that is for only Alliance, I am Alliance myself, yeah, sure, uh, but it is only for Alliance, and in fact, actually, that's something I should say now. Horde players have been up in arms about it, not just because the Alliance got a quest line and they didn't get an equivalent one, because the developers were quick to point out, actually, the Horde did get an equivalent one, but it was some time ago. The Anduin one was just a belated follow-up to the... Um, fallout after the Broken Shore stuff that happened when Legion first launched, that Horde got theirs pretty much straight away in terms of cementing Sylvanas's position as War Chief. So this is just the equivalent. Except it's not all that equivalent because we got a tasty amount of artifact power from it. Um, I can't, how much was it now? Is it a couple of million, something like that? But it was nonetheless a source of easy artifact power if as equally as dull as the nether shards, in fact worse, because what you had to do, for those who don't know yet, you go out to sea, you pick up something, then you go to Stormwind Keep, you turn it into Anduin, and that's it. Okay, sure, yes, there's another follow-up that happens a couple of days later, not straight away. Um, probably they're thinking, well, the day or two later, because then there's supposed to be an actual passage of time. But, I mean, although I think that works in a single-player RPG, in, in an MMO like this, you just get the feeling, at that point in time, if you don't know anything different, at that point in time, you're just going, okay, I found this exclamation mark over the sea, or someone told me about it, I went and picked it up, I took it to Storm and Keep, turned it in, and that was it. It's like, pff, what? That was it. Um, and yeah, okay, you got 2 million AP, and then the Horde players are not happy about it, because they didn't get their 2 million AP, so... Hmm. Um, I strongly suspect, because Blizzard have replied to, to that criticism, by the way, so I strongly suspect they will cobble together some nonsense for the Horde to do probably next week or the week after that gives them the same artifact power again um, to balance it out, I suppose. But yeah, this quest line doesn't at all... I think what a lot of people are going, oh, this makes up for it, surely, is just the fact that it's the cinematic. But the cinematic itself is not content. They're always really good, of course. The cinematics are fantastic. And this particular cinematic is really good as well. But that's not the con that's not me doing anything. That's just the stuff at the end of it. Uh, the me doing stuff is go is someone tells me to do a thing and I go to a place and turn it in. You know, there's nothing, no engagement from my point of view. From my point of view, it's entirely passive. And, and that's not really... Uh, what I would call content. So no, I don't think that makes up for it at all. I'm still bitterly disappointed. Um, and again, it's not, and some people said, oh, Blizzard can't win, can they, if they don't put too much content in your main, if they don't put enough in your main. There's nothing to do with that. Um, the analogy I used in a reply to someone is a bit like someone offering you a biscuit. You weren't particularly after a biscuit, but someone says, would you like a biscuit? And you go, ah, actually, yeah, I would like a biscuit. And then they don't give you a biscuit. It's a bit like, well, I didn't really need a biscuit, but you offered it. And I thought, yeah, that'd be nice. And then you don't give me a biscuit. It's disappointing. If the, if Blizzard hadn't have said there were new quests each week, and then we didn't get new quests each week, we'd be fine with it because they didn't promise it. We don't expect it. You know, if they just said, oh, every few weeks there'd be some a new quest, uh, and then they just lump them all together. That's my point on that one. Anyway, next bit of news is the tank challenge has been nerfed again. Uh, so the, with the mage tower coming up. The third mage tower is going to, of course, have a pretty rubbish buff. It's just going to be the water walking. So if you don't have the Azure Strider mount, then, okay, you can use any mount on it. Um, I strongly suspect this one has been put in because Ian Hazacostas has, has made a number of off, offhand remarks regarding water strides in the past, little tongue-in-cheek things, which I think basically indicate he doesn't like the idea of the water strider. Um... So I think they've put this one in as a way to say, well, just use any mount at that point. The irony is, of course, that a lot of people have now got flying. Even I've got flying now. So water walk, it's like, what's that even for? We don't need it at all. Um, I'm going to be doing a video on, on my take on flying in Legion uh, and all the hoo-ha around it, actually. Um, the pros and the cons this weekend as well. But yeah, it's like, 
Okay, the next Mage Tower buff, we get Water Walking on any mount. Most of us, well, I don't know, maybe it's not true, most of us can fly, maybe. Maybe not. Uh, but an awful lot of people can fly now. Uh, it's hilarious, it's almost like they're having a joke with us. But yeah, the 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 other thing that comes with the Mage Tower, of course, is the, the challenge. So if you haven't completed the challenge so far, you get another opportunity. Blizzard have obviously decided, obviously after the first Mage Tower, it's fairly clear that the tank one was rock solid. Uh, maybe too difficult, so they've nerfed it a bit for the second time. And then they've obviously decided there's still not enough tanks that are able to complete it. So it looks like they've nerfed it again, as far as I can tell. And uh, so we'll, we'll hopefully there'll be a bit of better balance of the number of tanks compared to equivalent DPS and healers being able to complete their challenge now. Um, I suppose this is the downside of not having a lot of testing on it. I could actually moan about the testing in general with PTR stuff, even the stuff that they say they do test. I have never had to write as many tickets for bugs um, in the last couple of weeks, since 7.2 came out, or last few weeks really, than I have done. I mean, all sorts of quests seem to be b badly broken. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not even going to do a moaning video about that one. It's just, I mean, bugs are bugs. But uh, I have noticed, yeah, I've... I've you know, and when I say fill out a ticket, I don't mean submit bug reports that like, okay, there's, here's a bug, you might want to do something about it. I mean things that stop me playing the game. You know, just straight up stop me playing the game. It's like, I cannot continue because of this thing. Um, and then you have to wait for a ticket, which doesn't get answered usually till the next day. And it's like, so then you fill in the survey. They do fix it and they, they get, let me start playing again. But it's like, and you have to fill in the survey how satisfied with you it's all very very good until you get to the point of how satisfied with the time it took well not very satisfied at all because for a day i couldn't use that character or couldn't do that content that i want to do on that character um the other thing is again buildings wise is we've now got the command center is it a second command center now i think it's a second but the one that gives us a legendary follower item uh, some of them are better than others i actually looked out uh i i got one that Reward on my main paladin. I got one that sort of you put it on a, a a champion who follows you around like a combat ally, which I don't really use. But when you complete world quest, them gives you a extra bit, a little bit of gold. And okay, it's fine. Uh, I suppose we don't really need the order resources anymore. But also an artifact power token, very tasty. So yeah, I'm going to be uh, getting. <laughs> So that's actually going to be really, really good. And the artifact knowledge goes up. It's just these extra sources of artifact power that are just going to help smooth it over. It is, an, annoyingly, another thing that's going to encourage me to do more world quests than I would ordinarily do. But at the same time, I think I'm not going to, like, take it as, oh, I've got to do every world quest that's going. I'm not going to do that. I have no time for that. Uh, so it's, it's, that's a, quite a good item. Some people just got ones that say where your follower gives you order resources and gold something like that that's probably the, the least good of them some of them that give you better chance on missions as well as shorter duration those are fairly nice i suppose uh but i think yeah they'll think the one I, i've got the eight everything's about ap these days so i think that one is probably the better one um other thing is um we've got the 50 percent rep gain now which ordinarily you just think eh. But now, of course, since 7.2, that's actually a really useful buff. This is the one that's tied to the Archmage. When you go through to Violet Hold to the left rather than to the right where you get your coins, to the left where you get your, like, your weekly quests or whatever it happens to be. It's World Quest this week. But yeah, 50% extra rep from completing World Quest in 7.2 is actually quite useful because it's going to move you along those bars more quickly to get in those caches, which most of the time just give you like gold or something like that, which is still all right. You know, it's, you're not doing anything really for it. Um... But has the chance of giving you the rare mounts and, and, and things like that. So that's actually quite handy. And you might, again, another thing that might get you to this week, want to do a few more world quests than you normally would if you've got a bit of time, rather than just running around Dalaran aimlessly, which I quite like doing. Maybe just go out and do a few extra world quests. Uh, world quests that are now a lot easier with flying. But as I say, more about that in the flying video that's coming. PTR stuff. So the, the, announcing more little things with the PTR. Again, they're announced more sort of fun cosmetic -y type things rather than solid content um which is interesting we know that we're getting some solid stuff with it we know that we're getting the time walking black temple which people are going to be well up for we also know that we're getting the tomb of sargeras raid itself so there's there's definitely good content coming but it puts me in mind some of the things that they're announcing of 
the selfie camera in Warlords of Draenor. And we had this situation where the patch that introduced that was known as the selfie patch. Because in a lot of people's minds, there was no actual content that came with it. It was just the cosmetic stuff. And I actually quite like the selfie camera. I think it's quite good. Uh, I haven't used it a lot recently, but it's a nice little idea. One of those things that, and I think the only reason it was disparaged so badly is because it it came in a patch where nothing of substance really came in it. And I think they'll get away with it this time because there's other things like that. I mean, you've got the trial of style, you've got the transmog competition. So we know a bit more about that. The way that'll work is you'll compete with other players, um, you know, in a transmog type competition. And uh, I mean, the devs are, are on line at the moment on the PTR today, uh, help, you know, taking part in that and interacting with players, I guess getting, you know, feedback, seeing how people actually uh, take to it. Um, so a lot of people are looking forward to that. You could, and, and the other thing is that they'll just sort of announce the auction house dance party. <laughs> I'm not kidding. The auction house dance party with disco balls and colored lights all over the place. Um, hmm sort of reminisce maybe i don't know is this sort of leaning towards the dance studio that was promised what was, was that promised for wrath there was an expansion some expansion ago. i'm pretty sure it was for wrath and and they went as far as to advertise it not to say that it was a feature they were planning but to actually advertise it was an actual advert for the expansion that included dance studio in it and then it never came and a lot of people, not, I don't know about the majority of people, but a number of people are quite disappointed. Maybe this is moving on the way to getting back with it. And then another thing they announced on the PTR, without any details, without knowing anything about it, uh, gnome racing. Gnome racing. Uh, it doesn't explain what happens. I don't think it's sensible that we ride the gnomes. You know, they're too small. Um so it sounds to me like we have our own little stable of, of gnomes that we race, you know, like greyhounds, uh, oh, less intelligent greyhounds, of course. I just think, you know, you can imagine them racing around the, tri uh, the track for our amusement. It's actually really good, maybe, because I, I was just saying to my guild recently, all these tickets I keep putting in about gnomes being in the game, and they don't really seem to respond to them. And, and I was scratching my head about this, and I was thinking, well, what's going on? And and it's, you know, why are they just... They give us use, some useful names. I mean, we've got Jeeves that gives us repairs. And we've got Blingtron, which gives us presents. Occasionally, the odd legendary. Um, but a lot of the time, you know, most names we have to put up with are just, just pointless. So now it sounds like they're actually going to make some more useful names. We, we sort of presumably breed and, and raise our own gnomes uh, as if we need any more of them. Or maybe we enslave the gnomes that are already about. Yeah, that would work. Yeah, maybe we just enslave gnomes uh, and make them race for our amusement, a bit like a sort of Roman gladiatorial ring, a chariot racing type thing. Maybe it works like that. Yeah, maybe that's it. Uh, like a demolition derby of gnomes in their pointless contraptions and, you know, last one standing's the winner. Hmm, yeah, that might work. But they haven't given any details about it, so I'm only guessing at the moment. It's the only thing that seems to make sense to me. Um, and then the other thing they've been doing is the... The developers have been having a lot of discussions and explanations about where they think they're going with certain specs. There are some there was there were some hot fixes this week for certain classes and specs, but come 7.2.5, there are a number of specs which I talked about last week that are going to have major changes. And as a result of that, Blizzard seemed quite keen, very positive about this, that there should be a lot of discussion. So they've, they've had a number of discussions about those as well. Uh, if you look on the forums, they've been explaining their thinking with certain things. They've changed their mind on certain things as well based on community feedback. Uh, so it does sound like it is well worth, uh, you know, expressing your views on that. Um, as long as they're constructive, I guess. So, yeah, they are. The, there are big changes coming for some specs, but it does look like Blizzard are very keen to get uh, some feedback on it, at least there. Uh, so that's pretty much what's happening in the last seven days. So thanks very much for watching. And until next time, I'll see you later.